Hi, this is Dr. Mustafa Khan. I'm a board certified orthopedic spine surgeon. If you have a pinched or irritated nerve in your lower back, you can develop a pattern of pain, numbness, tingling, pins and needles, and even weakness of the lower extremity. You may have one or all of these symptoms. This condition is known as lumbar radiculopathy. In most cases of lumbar radiculopathy, you can get a pretty good idea of which nerve is affected or pinched in the lower back based on the location of the patient's pain. For example, let's start with the L5 nerve, which is the most commonly affected nerve in most cases of lumbar radiculopathy. The L5 nerve comes out between the L5 and the S1 vertebrae. It then goes deep into the pelvis and it exits the pelvis through the sciatic notch in the buttock. From the buttock, it goes to the outside of the thigh, continues beyond the knee into the outside of the shin, and goes into the top of the foot, and classically into the big toe. So if a patient is having pain, numbness, or tingling at this location, you can be pretty confident that this is a L5 nerve root problem. The second most commonly affected nerve root is the S1. The S1 nerve comes out between the S1 and the S2 vertebral segments. This nerve goes into the buttock and goes directly into the back of the thigh, back of the calf, and into the heel and the outside border of the foot. This location is classic for S1 radiculopathy. And these patients may have difficulty pushing their foot down, pushing their ankle down. They will also have typically a lot of spasms of the calf. And they also describe a significant amount of numbness of the foot, and in particular, the outside border of the foot. Now let's talk about the L4 radiculopathy. The L4 nerve root comes out between the L4 and the L5 vertebral bodies. After exiting the pelvis through the sciatic notch, the L4 nerve goes into the front of the thigh, crosses the knee, into the inside of the shin. Patients with L4 radiculopathy will have pain, numbness, and tingling at these locations. In severe cases, they may also develop what's called a foot drop, meaning they have a difficult time pulling up their ankle against resistance. Also, since the L4 nerve root powers the quadricep muscle, patients with L4 radiculopathy may also experience a sensation of instability of the knee when they're going up and down stairs. These features are pretty classic for a L4 radiculopathy. Finally, let's talk about the radiculopathy affecting the L3 nerve root. Compared to the radiculopathies in the L5, S1, and L4 pattern, which we just talked about, L3 radiculopathy is much less common. Patients with a L3 radiculopathy typically will have very little or no pain at all in the buttock itself. Instead, they'll have a radiating diagonal pattern of pain affecting the front of the thigh and stopping at the knee. The L3 radiculopathy will not go beyond the knee, which is how you differentiate it from a L4 radiculopathy. From a clinical standpoint, the most commonly affected nerve roots are the L5, S1, and L4 nerve roots, and to a lesser degree, the L3 and the L2 nerve roots. Importantly, the L4, L5, S1 nerve roots combine to form the sciatic nerve. So an irritation of either L4, L5, or S1 nerve root will produce sciatica, whereas irritation or compression of the L2 or L3 nerve will cause radiculopathy, which technically speaking cannot be called sciatica. So that is the difference between radiculopathy and sciatica.